Before we get started, I would like to thank the many residents from the town who are serving as our counters and uh, in helping our town clerk, Felicia, conduct this meeting tonight. I would also like to thank the Boy Scouts who are going to be acting as the pages tonight, Oliver Freed, Robert Giassi, James Gibbons, and Varen Gianti. They will be bringing the microphones to you after I recognize you to speak. When they bring the microphones, the microphones will be on. Uh, please uh, keep your remarks uh, concise and to the point. It is very important that uh, we try to have this meeting adjourn at a reasonable hour and that we not take advantage of your large yes for staying here tonight. Town meeting would be very boring if we all agreed. It is the heart of democracy that people will disagree, but it is very important that we disagree without being disagreeable. When making remarks tonight, please avoid ad hominem remarks. Uh, please stick to the issues that are before us, and I'm sure that we will all appreciate what you have to say. Democracy is a very valuable gift that has been provided to us as a result of sacrifice of millions of our fellow citizens and residents. Let us pause for a moment of silence to remember those that have fought for this gift in the past and those that are fighting to protect us even now as we speak. A moment of silence, please. Thank you and may God bless America. We will now move to Article 1. Mr. Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article 1. Yes, Mr. Lawrence. Thank you. <laughs> Article 1. Amendments of the Regional School District Agreement of the Minuteman Regional Vocational School District to see if the town will vote consistent with Section 7 of the existing agreement with respect to the establishment of a technical and vocational regional school district for the Minuteman Regional Vocational School District to accept the amendments to said agreement which have been initiated and approved by a vote of the Regional School Committee on December 21st, 2015, and which have been submitted as a restated regional agreement bearing the date of December 21st, 2015 to the Board of Selectmen of each member town. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Um, Mr. Lawrence, would you like to make a motion? Yes, I would, Mr. Moderator. I move that the town, consistent with sec Section 7 of the existing agreement with respect to the establishment of the Technical and Vocational Regional School District for the Minuteman Regional Vocational School District, accept the amendments to said agreement, which have been initiated and approved by a vote of the Regional School Committee on December 21, 2015, and which have been submitted as a restated regional agreement bearing the date of December 21, 2015, to the Board of Selectmen of each member town. Do I hear a second? Mr. Moderator. Ms. Kenny. Second. Thank you very much. So this article pertains to the amendment of the Minuteman Regional School District Agreement. And I will now turn to um, Candace McCann from the Board of Selectmen for her remarks about this article. Thank you, Mr. Rapetti. And thank you all for being here tonight. The amendments in the new agreement are as follows. And there are others, but these are the key amendments. Dover and six other towns will be able to withdraw if the citizens choose with no penalty. Number two, for member towns, a five student minimum has been reduced to one student. Again, another one, non-member towns will pay an additional capital assessment added to their students' tuition. Another amendment is proportional voting replaces single member veto power, making for more functional governance, but a smaller voice for Dover. And lastly, these improved terms will likely attract new member communities to the Minuteman District. Simply put, we must approve this new agreement in order to have any subsequent choices. Passing Article 1 is the key that unlocks the door to Article 2 and, if necessary, Article 3. Thank you. Are there any questions with respect to Article 1? 
Okay, this is on my journey. Yes, Miss. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> My name is Elizabeth Rich. I'm a resident of Six Greenhouse Hill Road, uh, town meeting taxpayer for 17 years. This is my first time speaking. I have too much respect. My mother was an elected town meeting member for 35 years in Wellesley. Um, my question is the following. A student minimum has been reduced to one student. Does that mean that we do bear capital costs and we are willing to pay capital costs? Because I have an argument, a well-drafted argument in favor that we should share and bear capital costs. I think that the reason why we have not been sending more students has a lot to do with not parents not being aware of the excellent curriculum being offered there and the excellent curriculum that's being added there. Um, and I think we could be doing more both from a parent standpoint and a guidance standpoint in encouraging our students to attend Miniman and benefit from it are likely much more likely with the, the addition of the multimedia studies that there'll be more students attending the demand and more of our engineering future coming from that school than even DS. So that's just my, it's both the question and the comment to roll together. All right, thank you, Miss. Thank you, Miss Rich. Ms. Kay. Thank you very much for your question. And I uh, would like to suggest that that be a part of the discussion for Article 2 because what we're talking about now is simply approving Article 1, which gives us the right to then to discuss the rest of the terms about staying or withdrawing. Very good points, though. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Yes, gentlemen in the back. Thank you. Maxwell Morton, Sterling Drive. Uh, I noticed we're talking about capital uh, how the capital will be uh, appreciated among the various towns. And I noticed that as a subparagraph of the handout, it talks about a new school, uh, roughly $150 million. Uh, several questions relating to that. One, who, what voice did Dover have in agreeing or disagreeing to the construction of a new school? What cap is there on the capital cost of that school? And if that goes over, do we either as a member or non-member get uh, uh, assessed for that increase? OK, thank you. Ms. Kenny? Thank you. Also, another very good point and a part of the discussion for Article 2. Thank you. May I add something, Mr. Moderator? Yes, sir. Dover would be assessed capital costs under either the old agreement or the new agreement if it were to remain in district. The terms of the new agreement and some of these questions that are getting into them really go to the heart of Article 2. Does, go, yes, sir. Go ahead. Excuse me. Does that, um, through you, Mr. Moderator, uh, does that include the answer to, or does Article 2 include the answer to how the new school was approved? I, I, I don't know how it was approved and who was involved in that. Okay, Ms. Kenny? Again, I think that when we get into discussing Article 2, sorry for the feedback, when we get into discussing Article 2, I think you'll hear all the points about the capital project, about the approval of it, about whether or not we want to stay in the district or we don't want to stay in the district, and that's a part of that larger discussion. But in order to have the choice, to have the choice of either staying in the district or withdrawing, we must approve this new agreement. That's why Article 1 is the first step. Without Article 1, there is no further discussion. It just reverts back for not only for Dover, but all 16 towns. Oh. Yeah, uh, Mr. Fleming. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. The reference to six towns, now the Freeman talked about 16. Could someone tell us right now how many towns have voted, how many accepted, 
how many rejected, and what's the, what's the reference of six towns to 16 towns? Okay, Ms. Kane. And, and uh, uh, Mr. Fleming, if I could just confine your question to Article 1 with respect to how many towns have approved this agreement, and then we'll come back to your additional questions for Article 2 as well as the gentleman in the back. All 16 towns before the 1st of March will have had a special town meeting in order to approve this Article 1. We've already had nine towns hold their special town meetings, and every one of the nine towns has approved Article 1. In addition to that, three of those nine towns have voted to withdraw from the district. What is left, because of the snow day two weeks ago, there are four special town meetings being held tonight. Not only is Dover meeting, but Belmont, Bolton, and Lexington are meeting tonight as well. They will be voting on Article 1, and some will be making a decision about Let's see, of those towns, none of them except Dover is considering withdrawing. But tomorrow night, Lincoln is voting at a special town meeting. Boxborough and Weston will be voting on Wednesday night. Uh, does that answer your question, Mr. Fleming? Yes, thank Great. you. Thank you very much. Any further questions on Article 1? Again, Article 1 is approving the new agreement which will enable the town of Dover to determine whether it wishes to withdraw or not. A yes vote will be approving the agreement, the amended agreement. A no vote will be disapproving the amended agreement. Any further discussion? All in favor of Article 1, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 2. This article considers whether Dover should withdraw from the Minuteman School District. It is a majority vote. Mr. Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article 2, withdrawal of the town of Dover from the Minuteman Regional Vocational School District. I move that the town withdraw from the Minuteman Regional School District effective July 1st, 2017, contingent upon the acceptance on or before March 1st, 2016, by all of the current members of the Minuteman District and the approval on or before December 31st, 2016, by the Commissioner of Education of the amended regional agreement dated December 21st, 2015, which has been submitted to, to the member towns by the Minuteman Regional School Committee. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Do I hear a second? Second. Mrs. Canny has seconded. And thank you. Please note that this article is drafted in such a way that a yes vote is in favor of withdrawal. A no vote will be opposed to withdrawal. And I'll be reminding you again of that when we take the vote. The newspapers and some of the letters to the editors have confused that point. Uh, I would now like to turn the discussion over to Mr. Spalding and Robin Hunter. Thank you. And I want to, first of all, thank you all for coming. It means a lot to the town of Dover, for future students in Dover who might go to a Minuteman and also to the Minuteman District. I'm very appreciative of you being here. I'm Ford Spalding, Dover's representative of the Minuteman School Committee, and I've done that for seven years. I live at 5 Hutton Road. Minuteman is Dover's career and technical vocational school located in Lexington, just off of Route 128, I-95. Dover has been a member of the 16 member districts since 1973. The district goes from Dover to the south, to Carlisle to the north, from Arlington to the east, and Lancaster to the west. In addition, historically, students also come from non-district uh, members, such as Waltham, Woburn, Watertown, Cambridge, Boston, Peabody, and others. For the past 10 years, 65% of the students have come from in-district and 35% have come from out-of-district. The number of students has ranged from approximately 900 plus students to the current 673 students. Minuteman is two uh, schools in one. It provides general academic education similar to that that you see at dover Sherbin. The curriculum has foreign language courses, math, English, history, the sciences, and others. It has a no-cut sports program and other extracurricular activities. 
Most notable is the Vocational State and National Skills USA competition, which Minuteman typically excels in on a state and national level. Like DS, the Minuteman students must pass the state required MCAS exams, and we have a 100% passing rate. We also provide advanced placement courses, uh, course opportunities. Minuteman also offers an extensive number of career and technical courses. A Minuteman student, in order to graduate, must be certified in the curriculum of their choice. Thus, a Minuteman student must pass the academic courses, the career and technical courses, and admincast exams in order to graduate. The curriculum options are automotive technology, biotechnology, construction trades, culinary cosmetology, engineering, robotics, horticulture and landscaping, health occupations, and others. And over the next four years, we're going to be adding advanced manufacturing and multimedia engineering. Approximately 65% of our graduates go to college, and 33% go to their, their professions of their choice, and the remainder into the military. Colleges and employers like Minuteman students because they arrive with a purpose in mind, a passion for their interest, and skills to be productive. The four gra uh, graduates, one is in culinary, he owns a uh, restaurant in New York City. Uh, the other is a, a student uh, who was at Minuteman, who was in biotechnology, and she's in stem cell research at Mass General Hospital, uh, as she says, working to save lives. Uh, another student is, uh, was a, in hairdressing, uh, cosmetology, and she owns her own studio in Boston and is very successful. And the final is in landscape design, a gentleman uh, who graduated from Minuteman who is in Needham uh, and has a very successful landscape design. What they do if we don't get, are able to get it up, they're talking about their experiences at Minuteman and the, movie, uh, the film weaves in current students with them. Minuteman has always been under one half of 1% of our Article 4 Dover budget. My assumption is that will not even change with a new building. That's one half of 1% of our Article 4 budget. This May, at our annual town meeting, we'll be voting to fund our part of the 144.9 uh, new building project to replace the 1972 uh, building in partnership with the Mass School Building Authority. Dover's payment over 30 years will be approximately 2% of the total building cost. The MSBA will pick up over 32% of the total cost based on an eligible cost of 44.75%. For Dover, this will mean an increase, it will mean an increase in our Article 4 Minuteman budget. For a discussion of the Minuteman impact on Dover's Article 4, let me introduce Robin Hunter. Thank you, Mr. Squally. Ms. Hunter? This is a new experience for me, operating the slides as well as talking about them. So I put together a comparison of what we believe the costs would be of sending zero students or up to four students to Minuteman. The purpose of this was to demonstrate that there is a break-even point. Historically, Dover has sent anywhere from zero to four students a year. Over the last 15 years, there's only been one time where in 2008 where we did not spend, send any students. As you can see, under the new agreement, if whether or not we send a student, there is still a cost to Dover. And there's a cost to every town, not just to Dover. The reason for that is there's a new formula in which the allocation of capital is, is um, allocated to all member towns. Every single town in the district is allotted 1% of the capital. And that, for us, is approximately $42,000. That $42,000 gets spread over the number of kids that we send to Minuteman. So if you send 10 kids to Minuteman, that $42,000 is, is spread over 10 kids. For some of the larger towns, this is a non-factor, but for us, it's a factor. And so if we 
sends zero students to Minuteman, it will cost us $58,000 a year to stay in the region. As we begin to increase the number of students that we send there, the cost goes down for us. So we have two choices here. Stay in Minuteman, send student, or we could send students to Minuteman out of district if there are spots for them. And you can see in the incremental saving line, that is showing you the difference between sending students to Minuteman in the region or out of the region. And again, these are just estimates. And then the question is, well, what choices do we have um, if we don't send kids to Minuteman at all? So we did quite a bit of research. We talked to the school administration about the choices for Dover and also what are Dover's responsibilities for vocational education. There are other schools around us. There is Tri-County that Sherbourne belongs to. They have a waiting list and there's no guarantee that a Dover student would be able to attend that school. There is um, Keefe Tech which is in Framingham, and they are less expensive than Minuteman because these schools are larger than Minuteman, and they don't have the course offerings that Minuteman has. So that begs the question, what is Dover's responsibility? And under Mass General Law, um, if Dover has a vocational program that they belong to, our students, if that program offers a course that they're interested in, our students go there. Without a program, it becomes the students or their family's choice as to what program they're interested in, where there is availability, and the student applies to the program like any other student, and when they get in, it becomes the responsibility of the town of Dover to pay for that student along with transportation. The estimates that I have here of $30,000 a year are estimates today based upon tuition and our best guess of what potentially transportation may be. Uh, we have no idea what those costs may be in the future. We do have a better idea of what the costs are at Minuteman. And so the question is, as a town, do we want to purchase an insurance policy and stay in the Minuteman region, or do we want to roll the dice and you know try and figure out how many students in Dover may want this kind of education and what it would cost us today and in the future? Thank you, Robin. So, should we stay a member of the Minuteman District, or should we leave? Dover under Mass General Law Chapter 74, as Robin said, is required to provide access to their students to a vocational education. That is the student's choice. Dover Sherman High School does not offer that opportunity, and nor should they. The cost would be prohibitive. Since 1973, Dover has made that option available to its students by its membership in the Minuteman Regional District. And as Robin has said, for the past 15 years, 30 students from Dover have attended Minuteman. When they do, Dover has to pay the cost, and that cost does include tuition, capital, in this case it would be an MSBA building project, transportation and special education when appropriate. And I think uh, I'm right in the slide that Robin showed, that was for 2020 when we would have, a, uh, have to pay for a new building. So let's look at Minuteman's membership option. And I want you to think, as I just quickly go through these facts, think about the other schools in the area and how do they compete. Minuteman's 2015 MCAS results for juniors, math 94% proficiency or better, English 100% proficiency or better, science 99% proficiency or better, SAT scores, Reading 476, writing 447, math 452. Graduation, 65% to college, 33% into their chosen field, and then some go to college, and 2% in the military. There are 20 extracurricular programs, 10 varsity sports, strong educational partnership with local industry and colleges. 
Along with the typical vocational offerings, Minuteman also offers, and this does separate them uh, from some other of the other districts, biotechnology, multimedia engineering, advanced manufacturing, robotics, and environmental engineering. Priority admission is for in-district uh, ap applicants, and they also will have the opportunity to have a first choice to get into the career model that they want to get into. If Dover withdraws, what will the options be for our students and families? The proponents of leaving the Minuteman district need to answer really the following questions. How do the vocational schools within the proximity to Dover measure up with the previously mentioned Minuteman accomplishments? What are the costs of those vocational schools in 2020 and beyond? Robin has given you for what it would be in, for Minuteman. What is the availability for Dover's out-of-district students in other vocational schools in our geographical area? Here's what we know now. Tri-County, Assabet Valley, and Shawsheen have waiting lists. Blue Hills and Neshoba have limited space available. Some of us feel that in 2020, Dover will meet at 600, excuse me, the region will meet at 628 student enrollment quota. Why is that? A new educational facility is always an attraction. A revamped educational program is an attraction. Career and technical education is gaining in popularity as the cost for college increases and because of the demands of employers. Governor Baker has put in the, the, the recent budget $85 million for career and technical education. Another reason is because the new regional agreement and new educational facility will entice other cities and towns to join Minuteman, and we know of two others that we're in serious negotiation with. In closing, the decision you will make this evening is final. If Dover leaves, Dover will be out. As a member of the Minuteman District, future Dover students for any vocational schools will be considered out-of-district students. The state supports an admission policy that says in-district students must have priority for admissions. Once I, again, I suggest that before you make the decision to leave this evening, know what your other alternatives are. This is what you would do for your own child if they were looking for schools. This is what we should do for our town's fa families and students. Behind me you see a slide, and I'm not going to read it <coughs> because hopefully you can, but membership in the Minuteman District has its privileges. Membership has value. My recommendation is the Minuteman that you know is better than the unknowns of leaving the district. Dover has always valued its strong educational institutions. We have been willing to pay for excellence in education for Dover Elementary, for the Dover Sherbin Regional. Minuteman is part of the Dover educational family. Dover families do not select for their children what is best for their children based on the cheapest option. Minuteman exemplifies excellence in academic and career and technical education. Our future students deserve a choice of a Minuteman education, and membership in the district provides that option. Please vote no to leave the district. Can we, Bill, can we show the film, do you think? My name is Ed Cotton, and I'm the executive chef here at Soto 13 in New York City. My name is Kathy Montreville, and I am the head stylist at Salon Harapy. My name is Jason Crottle. I own and operate J.A. Crottle Corporation as a landscape construction business in Needham, Massachusetts. My name is Erin Meister, and I work for the Cellular Therapeutics and Transplantation Laboratory at Mass General Hospital. We give people a second chance at life. We work with the doctors and the nurse practitioners in assisting stem cell transplants. So when patients come in with certain disease states that require transplant, we'll get the cell source and dose it in a way that fits the prescription of the doctor. It, it is life-changing what we do here, and I, I just feel so grateful to be a part of that. I never stop thinking about food. I'm always constantly buying books, reading books, going out for dinner. You're putting out the food as fast as you can and you look out into the dining room and you see a bunch of people enjoying themselves, smiles on their face. That's what really gets me going each day. I basically do hair, makeup, and wardrobe. Um, and I can also do facials, basic manicures, pedicures, and waxing. I love making people look and feel at their best. 
Usually when people come into the salon, you know, they don't really feel at their best until they feel like they look their part. I love making a difference in their personal self-esteem. The best part of my job is seeing the finished product. When you actually build something and construct something with your hands and you can see the before and the after, there's a great deal of satisfaction. Minuteman prepared me in starting my own business with every aspect, down to customer service, people skills, financing, thinking of names and demographic. They gave us the confidence that we needed to be able to step into any job and to, to believe in ourselves enough to be able to know that we could handle it. Miniman helped me prepare to start my own business by exposing me to what horticulture landscape is, whether it be turf management, landscape construction, greenhouse management, or even arboriculture where it's taking down and caring for trees. Minuteman enabled me to see all of those different areas and choose what I wanted to do when I graduated. And most high school settings, we'd never see that. They have a bakery open to the public, a restaurant open to the public. You're in the back of the house, you're in the front of the house. It gave us a taste of what it was going to be like after we entered the real world. All of the equipment they have, they, they really do have what mimics what you find in industry. Like I found even my freshman year of college, I was doing things that I had been exposed to in high school. I didn't realize at the time like how, you know, how unique that was as like a high school program. At 14 years old, I had a big portfolio book and I was able to get any job right off the bat because first of all, this kid has a whole book of her work and second of all, she's not scared. Why? Because we had those mock trainings in our classroom and we had our teacher always prepping us and letting us know, you know, what will get you the job, what will make you stand apart. You have to be able to be a distinguished individual in this industry. There are many stylists born and many barbers born, but what makes you different? Our teachers made sure that we knew what that was and made sure that we capitalized on every chance to show the world what we could do. I don't know if there's an, any other 15 or 16 year old would walk up to a, an instructor and say, hey, I wanna make consomme. How do you make consomme? Well, we uh, set up a time this week and stay after and we'll make consomme. They cared, you know, they, they could see the fire in my eye and they knew that I wanted to learn more. Going to Minuteman kind of encouraged me to be a little bit more proactive about what I want to do in my future. It kind of gave me a safety net in deciding what I wanted to do because I didn't know if I wanted to do biotech or environmental. So having that four years, I was able to kind of do both without spending twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars, you know, declaring a major in college and then finding out one to two years into it that it wasn't for me. I would say to somebody entering the program, don't limit yourself just to the vocation that you pick. Give everything a chance. You can never have too many mentors. You know, ask questions, ask what they like, ask what they don't like. Finding something you don't like is equally as important as, as finding your passion. Experience all the different shops and opportunities at Minuteman because later on in life, you're going to be glad you did. Okay, thank you, Mr. Spalding and Mrs. Hunter. If I could now turn the uh, podium over to Doug Lawrence, the chair of the Warren Committee. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, and thank you everybody for coming out this evening. We greatly appreciate you taking your valuable time to vote on this issue. And to the, there's a, a, a sentiment in this room that people want to get home. I share that sentiment as well. The Warren Committee has recommended that Dover withdraws from the regional, the Minuteman Regional School Committee District. And it's a very straightforward recommendation. It's based on five simple reasons. First. There will be no annual cost to Dover if it withdraws from the Minuteman Regional School District. Dover has hardly ever sent four students to Minuteman. The Warren Committee believes there will be spots at other schools for Dover students seeking such education. Um, there are some terms in the new agreement uh, that are not favorable to Dover, and Dover would almost certainly be on the hook for any new debt, such as a new building that would issue from Minuteman. 
Please note that it's already been mentioned that three of the seven towns who are eligible to withdraw without penalty have elected to withdraw under this agreement. And those are Carlisle, Wayland, and Sudbury. West and Boxborough are voting tomorrow night and Lincoln on Thursday, and that will round out the seven towns. To go a little more in depth, a recommendation to withdraw is based on the following. As I said, Dover would not pay any annual costs if it were a non-member town. The only cost it would be liable for would be capital assessments that it had already incurred in previous years prior to December of 2015. It would not be liable for any future additional costs, including the debt for the new building. In addition, if Dover were to remain in district, it would send approximately $59,000 per year, even if it sent zero students to Minuteman. And that has happened on two occasions since 2001 in both 2004 and 2005. We cannot predict the future. The Warren Committee believes that there will be vocational technical education space at elsewhere, especially if the demand for it is as great as people are saying. Other towns apparently agree and have voted to withdraw and believe that their students seeking such vocational and technical education will be able to find it at places other than Minuteman without remaining in the Minuteman Regional School District. Finally, if Dover were to remain in district, there are some very unfavorable contractual terms in the new agreement. First, the agreement cannot be amended without unanimous approval. In addition, it also calls for proportional voting at the school committee level. As a small town, you can imagine that Dover's proportional share of that vote will not be great. Finally, a vote to remain in district will almost certainly result in Dover being on the hook for Minuteman's new building. As I mentioned earlier, under either the old agreement or the new agreement, Dover is responsible for paying a certain share of capital assessments. In order, under the new agreement, in order for Minuteman to issue new debt for the new building or otherwise, it's subject to a two-thirds vote. Dover, it's certainly, um, as a smaller town, not win those, the, that two-thirds vote. So for all of these reasons, and in short to sum up, no annual cost, we're unlikely to send four students there. We believe there's space el elsewhere. The terms of the new agreement and the incursion of new debt, the Warren Committee has voted to recommend that Dover withdraw from the Minuteman Regional School Committee District. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. And lastly, I'd like to turn to Jim Dolly, Chair of the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The Board of Selectmen voted not to withdraw, and that is our recommend recommendation this evening. Uh, many discussions involve both tangible and intangible aspects. The financial considerations presented are tangible, and they're not disputed. A Minuteman education costs more than other available options, mainly due to the proposed new campus, albeit a fraction of 1% of our town budget. The intangibles, however, weighed more heavily in our decision. First, we had input from the regional school administration, and their primary reasons for staying in the district were, one, having a guaranteed spot for a student, given how difficult it may be to place a struggling student at Tri-County. Two, the fact that Minman doesn't shy away from students with the IEP. Approximately 43% of the Minuteman student body has one. Three, the programming, particularly biotechnology and robotics, might be a good fit for upcoming students. And lastly, it is believed that the students currently in our middle school have shown interest in attending Minuteman, so the administration sees continued use. Secondly, it's very important to remember that not all students are the same. The Dover Sherburn school system is nationally acclaimed and the students who attend excel. But there are those whose learning styles, personality, and, and interests are different than perhaps much of the student population at Dover Sherburn. We have had families attend selectmen's meetings, write letters, call us about how their children have excelled at Minuteman, and were very honest in telling us they were, that their child probably would not have excelled in the Dover Sherburn school system. In essence, the families urged us to stay in the district to allow future students and their families the opportunity they had. A very powerful reminder that the solution to this question is not just a financial consideration. We, the Board of Selectmen, have voted to stay in the district. 
we feel very strongly in our recommendation to you, and we would never stand in the way of be the reason that a student did not have the ability to attend Middleman, uh, Minuteman, excuse me. We thank you very much for listening and encourage you to vote no. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dolly. I would now like to open it up for questions and comments. Gentlemen in the front here. Yes, sir, please stand. David Chase, uh, 65 Main Street. Can someone talk a little bit further about the proportional voting system and how much say do we really have going forward in the Minuteman School Committee budget if it's based on sending only a couple students there? Mr. Dolly, would you like to? No. Mr. Lawrence? Certainly. It's my understanding, and I don't have the document right in front of me, but I believe the proportional voting system is based on two factors. Half of that will be simply uh, the divisor of the number of towns in the Minuteman Regional School District. That will make up 50% of the proportional vote. The second proportion aspect of the proportional vote will be the actual number of students at Dover Sands compared to the total enrollment at Minuteman. Mr. Spalding? David, thank you. Um, the fact is, proportional voting, if we had had it in the last seven years, would not have changed one vote. Dover has had plenty of power with their only one vote of 16 towns in the last seven years. I can guarantee you that. Secondly, Dover, Arlington, Belmont, Lexington, Weston, Bolton, um, and a few other schools have always voted the same. Because it, it really hasn't been that difficult. We vote for an operating budget, which we bring to all 16 towns. We vote for a capital budget, which we bring to all 16 towns. And that's our main responsibility. We have a building project, and we've all voted the same on the proposed building project that you're going to see in May. So proportion of voting, normally I really don't think it's a very good idea. In this one, it's a not, totally a non-issue. Uh, Mr. Crowley. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Could you tell us again? Mr. The Crowley, could you just wait to state your name and address, please? Sorry. Tom Crowley, 7 Seed Hill Road. Could you give us the names of the town that have already voted to withdraw? I thought I heard it was seven. Was it, is it four or seven? Okay, yes, there were seven towns that were considering withdrawing. Three have already voted to, have already had their special town meetings and have indeed voted to withdraw and that is Carlisle, Sudbury, and Wayland. The other four towns that have the opportunity to vote to withdraw are Dover, Lincoln, Boxborough, and, Way and Weston, and those meetings are all this week. Okay, thank you. Now, if we've got a little bit, uh, almost 25% of the membership have already voted to withdraw, that's going to mean but the numbers are going to change. So our numbers are not going to go down, they'll go up if we stay in the district. So I think we should be very careful and we should know how many other towns are going to withdraw. It sounds like most of the small towns are going to withdraw. And I expect that the other towns that might come in would be towns with large populations. And I don't hear that we've really examine what our alternatives are. I don't hear anything about uh, Norfolk Aggie. Heard very little about Keith. And there's got to be one or two other towns, uh, other districts that we might be able to join. So I think we'd be very cautious and turn this down. We should vote to withdraw until we know where the heck this region is in terms of membership. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crowley. Mr. Spalding? 
Thank you, Tom. Let's see if I can uh, help you out. Well, the communities, the seven communities that are looking to withdraw, the largest one is Sudbury. Sudbury sends about 20 students. The other students, the other towns, the other six towns, they don't send 20 combined. They only send one or two students. So it's going to have very little effect on how, we're, uh, how, we would, how the towns can be allocated. Secondly, the towns that we are looking at that could come in are going to be a lot larger, and that will only help a town like Dover because it will help to lower our operating costs. So that will be a, a plus. You asked about other communities. I haven't spent a lot of time looking at, excuse me, other schools, but I do know the curriculums at the other schools, and I do know Minuteman's curriculum. Minuteman's curriculum fits the economic character of inside 495. We have an advisory council of about 200 of people who represent businesses along the 128, 495 area who help prepare the, cur uh, the curriculum. This is what our students are looking for. When you go further uh, west, that's not really the case. Finally, you asked about other schools and you mentioned uh, Norfolk Aggie. Norfolk Aggie is part of the Dover educational family. Because we are in the, in the uh, Norfolk County, we send students there, and we're sending two students there this year. So we have a total of four students, uh, two at Minuteman and two uh, at Norfolk Aggie right now. So they are very much a part of our system. They have a very different educational course, however, than we do. But if a student wants to go into veterinary work or they want to go into horticulture, Norfolk Aggie's the place to go. If they want to go into biotechnology or engineering or those courses, Minuteman's the place to go. Thank you, Mrs. Spawn. I saw uh, yeah, a gentleman in the back. Uh, yes, sir. Stand up, please. Doug Johnston, Main Street. I believe I heard Mr. Lawrence say that one of the disadvantages of the proposed new agreement is that it would require unanimous vote for changes. That is not consistent with item six under the provisions of the proposed agreement listed on page five. Mr. Lawrence. Um, any amendments to the new agreement would require unanimous approval by the member communities. I'll, I, can, I can get you the site if you give me a moment or two and perhaps we can move on to another question in the interest of time. It's item six on page five of the handout. Okay, we'll come back to that, sir. Uh, let me see if there's any, uh, yes. Dr. Akins. 18 Greystone Road. Uh, it's my understanding if we withdraw that Minuteman would still be in the mandatory of possible choices for one or two students to apply to, is that correct? All right, uh, who would like to answer that question, uh, Jim? That is correct, but it would be through an application process if there was available spots. It's used to withdraw as an application process to anywhere. That's correct. But men and men would be one of the possibilities. That's correct, if there's okay. a spot open, correct. Thank you. And gentlemen, back here. Yes, sir. Hello, I'm Bob Purdy, Turtle Lane. I also represent Dover and Dover County, which includes the Aggie School. The Aggie School is indeed an agriculturally oriented school. It does, have, however, have other courses. However, the curriculum in that school is nowhere near as comprehensive as the one at Minuteman. I strongly urge that we stay with Minuteman and vote no on number two. Thank you. Yes, uh, third row, stand up please, thank you. Judith Morton, 9 Sterling Drive. What happens to a child who want, if we withdraw, who wants to go to one of these schools and can't get in, number one, and number two, who pays for this child to go there? Okay, uh, Jim? The first part of the question was? Could you um, repeat the question, please? I, I think I what happens to a child who wants to go to one of these technical schools and there's no room for them? Um, 
much like any other school, that they you'll either go back to the Dover Sherwin Public School System or pick another um, school of their choice. Without and a technical is, school, again, it, would an, it would be an application process to the many technical schools around uh, in the state. And who pays for them to go? The question was who pays for that? Well, um, I believe um, the Mass General Laws dictates that the town has to pay for that student going anywhere. Mr. Spalding. Thank you. Mr. Spalding. Thank you, Jim. Yes, uh, the town would have to pay uh, the transportation costs, tuition, and any other costs uh, that are there. Um, if a student, let's say a student gets into Assabet, and they want to go to Assabet, but they want to go into a certain program, as an out-of-district student, they're going to have to wait to see if all if there's any room after in-district students have been there. So it's more than just getting into the school, it's getting into the program. If you're an in-district student, you have first priority to get in, and there is an application process. It's different than it would be to go to a private school, but there is a process. And secondly, then you have to apply to get into that program if there is room. As an in-district student, you have priority to get into the school and to get into that program. I'd like to return to uh, Mr. Lawrence. I believe he's found an answer to the gentleman's question in the back. Uh, yes, sir. Um, section B of the amended agreement, it states that any amendment to the agreement may be initiated by a three-quarter vote of the school committee, and if that if the vote meets that threshold, then it goes out to all the member towns, and such amendment must be approved unanimously. Again, that's Section 7B of the actual new agreement. To the extent it says differently in the handout on page 5, uh, this document was drafted very quickly. The Warrant Committee had to rely on information that was provided to us, and we simply did not have the time to vet every single item that was told to us. So I've just cited you the exact site in the new agreement, and if you have any other questions about it, I'm happy to answer those. I'm sorry, sir, could you wait till a microphone comes? Right. Uh, th that would be one way of phrasing it, sir. <laughs> uh, sir, could you stand up, please? Do you, do you want the microphone? No? Okay. All right, uh, Ms. Rich? Hello. <clears throat> My qualification was that in 1976, I was a, um, at the statewide level of the state's um, wide board of education. Massachusetts at the time was the only state in the country that had a student as a full voting member of the state, um, as a full voting member of the state board of education, and I was on the statewide board of education, advising them from Wellesley High School. Um, I just wanted to qualify something. My daughter is Emily Rollervan, class of 1913. She was the 2013. She was the Art Declamation speaker. Um, what she has told me is very concerning to me. Amongst her classmates, many have dropped out. Many have transferred. Many are, some have been able to find careers and are happily tennis teaching pros. But many have actually not been as happy as their illusionary we put undue pressure on our children to attend prestigious colleges. And um, when, after my divorce, I considered transferring back to Wellesley, and I discussed it with my daughter, you know, selling and getting an apartment, and she flatly refused. And she gave the reason as the six suicides that she was aware of in the town of Wellesley. The only question that everyone ever asked me my senior year was, where are you going to college? And we, we've had, I think what we need to do is to spend our time with our children, get to know with their degree, their interests, and not be just so fixed on the idea of being able to say, my child went to Harvard or Wellesley. And I'm speaking as a Wellesley College alum. Thank you. MIT alum at Brown alum. Thank you, But Ms. just Thank more importantly, I think you need to familiarize yourself with the true curriculums of the future are for Minutemen. And to back out and to not bear capital costs is, is this is a permanent decision. If we back out now, Minuteman could be the hottest school around, and we will have lost our chance to participate. 
So think, it's penny wise and pound foolish, and that's what I spoke to when we had a million dollar shortfall with Sherber and the music education budget. I went to school committee and I said the same thing. And this would be the same decision. Don't vote, I vote no. My recommendation is to vote no. Thank you, Mrs. Rich. Gentleman in the back, with your hand, thank you. Uh, Dave Stapleton, Valley Road. Uh, since we're concerned about where the children are gonna be able to go if we back out, my question is, what percentage of the children at Minuteman now are from out of district? Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Spalding, would you like to answer that? Dave, it's about 35, 37% right now. Um, but again, the school committee, uh, when they, we currently have a building that could take over 1,000 students. Uh, part of the process that we've gone through in the last seven years of working on this project is we've had to downsize because before, uh, until recently, you couldn't charge out of district students for capital costs. So we're saying, why are we gonna build a building for out of district students and they're not gonna pay the freight? The Department of Education changed that. They changed that in 2015. So now we can charge out of district students to come to Minuteman. Um, so there will be a charge until we are filled with in-district students. And again, we believe that uh, in the next couple of years, and by 2020, 2021, Minuteman will be filled with in-district students. Thank you, Mrs. Smalley. Mr. Cohn? Yes, I'd like to, uh, uh, hope everybody can hear me, uh, uh, make a, a couple of observations. One of which, uh, currently there's 41% of the uh, students uh, at Miniman are out of district. And that number's actually risen a bit. And it's a, uh, it's a significant number. And uh, one, of the, one of the big out of district towns is Waltham. Uh, they just got approval to build and start vocational uh, training programs education inside their, their existing school, the Waltham School District. So that will possibly take some pressure off of uh, uh, the in-district applications. It's important to note that the big benefit of being a member is that you have uh, first first dibs at getting in. But it does by by withdrawing from the district, it does not mean that none of our students will ever be able to get into Minuteman again. And that's I think there's maybe a little misconception. It could very well be that in coming years um, the school ends up taking more and more in-district uh, students, and that, that could absolutely be the case. But the, the, the benefit, and I do think it's a superb school, and I think everybody who votes to stay in or to withdraw, everyone agrees it is a terrific school. It will only be better after this capital project. But right now, there's actually a lot of non-district uh, students there. Uh, everybody has to apply. Being in district is not a guarantee that you will be a member, but it is. It definitely gives you uh, first dibs on membership. But you may not. You may still apply uh, uh, being a a uh, uh, in district town resident and still not get in. That's that's a possibility. Um, so in our minds, the the big issue. Um, was what is the value, uh, or at least I should say in some of our minds, those of us who voted uh, to withdraw, what is the value of that benefit, and then what are the additional costs? And what are the potential risks of the costs being much greater than they are currently estimated to be? All of the numbers we've seen are good faith estimates of what the future costs will be. Um, they could be higher. Uh, Minuteman is an expensive school because it offers some uh, tremendous programs, but um, we don't know what the future costs will be there. We don't know what the future costs will be at some of the other vocational schools. But I, I do want to point out that if we voted to withdraw, I, I think it's a little misleading to think that no Dover kids would be able to get, get into, the, uh, into the district. Uh, that's, that's unclear um, going forward. Yes, lady in front. Wait till I'm in front of the microphone, please, and please state your name and address. Um, hi, my name is Deborah Hennessy. I'm from uh, 14 Meeting House Hill Road. And um, my daughter, Melanie, currently goes to Minuteman. She is one of the two. Um, as far as the in-district versus out-of-district um, 
differences. I think I can speak to that. Uh, Melanie knows a lot of kids who are from out of district. They're not able to take their first priority. It, it's just not open to them. So if you decide to withdraw and then you say, but it's okay, we can still get what we want because we just, we're just out of district, you probably won't be able to. And I don't see the point in, in you know, if your kid wants to go for graphic design, but only automotive is open for them, it's just not a choice. They're just not going to go. So when you take the in-district um, designation away, you're taking away a lot. Thank you. Mr. Crowley? Okay, a motion has been made to move the question. Do I hear a second? Okay, this is not debatable. It requires a two-thirds vote. All in favor of moving the question, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, I would like to have a standing count for this vote because of the importance uh, for other districts, that towns that are involved in the district. Again, remember that a yes vote is a vote to withdraw from the district. A no vote is a vote to stay in the district. I will ask those who are in favor of withdrawing from the district, those voting yes, to please stand and please remain standing until the counters have told you that it's okay to be seated again. All those in favor of withdrawing from the district, please stand. Beth, are we all set? No. very much you may be seated all those in favor of voting no on the motion and all, in other words all those in favor of staying within the district please rise to be counted
Uh, just a reminder from the town clerk, please stay standing until you're told that you can be seated. Thank you. Thank you, you may be seated. The motion to withdraw from the district has failed. Those in favor of withdrawal from the district, 56 voted in favor of withdrawal from the district, 124 voted against withdrawal from the district. I will now ask Mr. Lawrence to make a motion with respect to Article 3, which is now moved. Mr. Moderator, I hereby move that we dismiss Article 3. Do I hear a second? Mr. Moderator. Mrs. Candy has seconded. Thank you very much. All those in favor of dismissing Article 3, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Lastly, we need a motion to dissolve. Mr. Lawrence. Mr. Moderator, I make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? This section. <laughs> second. I have a motion to adjourn in a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much and have a good night.